Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to part 6 of our API and database testing with SpecFlow and C Sharp. And in this part, we'll be talking about database testing for our WCF API. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 and 5 since in those part, we were discussing how to test the WCF API. Alright, so before starting this video of this course, one must have a clear understanding on the good basic knowledge on SQL Server database because we're going to deal with database testing. So if you have a very good understanding on these informations that we are going to see right now as a prerequisite is very, very helpful. And writing a simple program in C Sharp for connecting to SQL Server is also required because we will not be dealing with writing a very, very simple program to connect to your SQL Server or how to execute a query in a SQL Server using C Sharp we are not really going to talk about them. Rather, we are directly going to test the applications database from our code. So the connectivity stuffs really we're not going to talk about. And then one must also have a good understanding on how to work with an automation framework because in this video and the rest of the videos, we'll be using one of the framework which we developed in some other courses and we will be working from there. So if you have a good understanding on working with our automation framework, then again, it's a very, very helpful stuff. So these are the prerequisites. If not, jump to our Udemy course on automation framework development with Selenium C Sharp, where we have discussed writing some of the code for the database connectivity, executing the query, and how to work with the database of our application, which is nothing but our employee application in much detailed which you can see from here where there is a section for our database testing and you can see there is an helper section and here is the database extension helper that we have developed in this course right great but don't panic yet because some of the videos that we're going to discuss in this course are not going to 100 percent relay on the course which is available in udemy rather even you can write your own connectivities that we saw in our critical site and then start working from there so that you don't really have to purchase this course. So for that, let's flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is the framework that I was talking about, the Execute Auto framework, which is available in our Udemy, where it actually has some of the features or some of the methods which will drive the database testing for us. Something like helpers. You can see there is something called database helper extensions where it will actually connect with the database of our application and perform some of the operations like executing query, opening the connectivity, executing the store procedures, etc. Right? And this framework is much sophisticated because it works with multiple different technologies like web services, web applications. Sometimes you can also extend this framework to work with a Windows application if you drive a coded UI library in it. And then you have this EA employee test project, which is nothing but the user of our framework or nothing but the consumer of our auto test framework. It can directly execute the code from here. So you can see there is a features folder which have the features and there is a steps folder which have all the steps. So we have already written some of the steps and features in our previous videos while we discussed about writing test in SpecFlow. But this time, I'm going to change the step definition a little bit to accommodate our database testing for our web service. In our last video, we discussed how to create some of the scenarios for checking our employees' PF contributions and checking employers' PF contributions by writing some of the simple step definitions which calculates the employee contributions and verify if the value which we have supplied is as expected or not. So you can see that the value we have supplied is actually the outcome of the web service, which is nothing but the expected PF contributions. But if the employee's salary is changing, let's say if the salary of Karthik is changing from 4,000 to 5,000, then the value of the expected PF contribution will also change. But this value to change in the database can only be done for now from the web UI that we have in our internet information server. But if we want to change this value of a salary, this one, 
from the database then of course we have to go and touch the database and change the value right which we cannot just do from the web service because the web service is only consuming the value from the database but it really don't have an access for now to perform some operation into the database right so how to change the value of a database and how to verify if the value which is available in the database is actually being tested correctly or not right so for that we are going to jump into our database testing concept so what I'm really going to do is what this particular scenario is doing it is checking if I can verify the contribution of the employee salary is as expected to the PF contribution right but what if I do like this what if I connect to the PF service and then what if I also connect to the database and supply the employee name as well as the employees salary and then if I verify the expected PF contribution is the one which I really expect for because I really know what is the logic behind the scenes how the PF employer contribution for an employee as well as the employer is working right so I can calculate the value and I can put that right here into our table so this is what we're going to do we are going to add an additional step with a little modifications here and there and then we are going to verify if the value which is coming from the web service is as expected or not right I hope you really got what the idea is if not I will walk you through by means of code so what I'm going to do is I am going to add some more step definitions for our execute auto employee test project so this time I'm really not going to use our existing employee web service test which we were using so far so don't panic yet I'm really not marketing the Udemy course that I got but this particular video is something which is more aligned to the course which we have already developed in our Udemy and that's the reason I am going to directly jump into this feature folders and the steps folder and I can make use of the existing infrastructure I got to use the web service directly instead of I write a lot of codes to connect to the database and perform the operation because the scope of this course this video series is not to tell everything from the ground up rather it is going to perform an operation on the database side and see how stuff works so I am very much interested in testing the database and inserting some values and getting a value out from the database that is the most important concept I got so for that reason I'm not really going to dig into the basics of the database right so that's why I'm going to make use of the existing infrastructure which we have developed in our Udemy course so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of this guy and I'm going to add a new feature here this time I'm going to add a feature and the name of the feature I'm going to give is maybe web service test which is nothing but pf web service all right so it has created a feature for us and then I'm also going to add one more step here so the step name is going to be as you know the same name for our same name as like the web service which is nothing but pf web service steps so easy for me because I have already the infrastructure for writing the features and step definitions and also this the test case hook and the hook which is available in my framework for the spec flow initialization is already available right here so I don't really have to break my head to perform the same kind of operation again and again all right great so what I'm going to do I'm just going to add a bindings attribute here and let's go to the feature so for the sake of time I have already written the feature which is this so as you can see here it is like this uh, I have used scenario outline this time and the scenario outline says like this verify employee PF contribution for specific supplied salary right and the step definition is this it has like given I have uh, connected with the PF service client which is pretty much same like the one we discussed in our previous videos and then these two are different it says and I insert salary for employee in the database then I check the employee contribution for the employee ID so as you can see all of these values are nothing but the parameters 
which I'm going to bring in from our examples of our scenario outline. And you can see the salary is something which is going to come from here. And the employee is actually going to come from here. And the employee contribution is going to come from here. And the employee ID is going to come from here. And this one is going to be 4000. So I'm going to just save this. And now there are three steps which has to be implemented, which I have not implemented yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a generate step definitions and you can click this and this will bring you up this guy. So I'm going to copy this method from the clipboard and then I'm going to go to my PF web service steps.cs and I'm going to just paste it right here. Great. So I'm going to split this video into two halves. The one half is going to be until this in the next half. We are going to really implement these step definitions in greater details, right? So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.